Okay, friends, I'm going to try to make this video short but also informative. I have been investigating why there's a bit of an anomaly where this software here, this NABU Internet Adapt Adapter software from DJ Shores at NABU.ca, works with this RS-422 serial adapter, but does not work with a TTL serial adapter uh, sticking one of these little interposer boards into the NABU uh, in place of the UART, and sticking the UART in there, which should be exactly the same thing because uh, well, there's an electrical difference between RS-422 and TTL. Um, inside of the NABU, there's just circuitry that converts that to that. So the bits are the same. The software is doing the same thing. It's sending out the same stuff on the wire. So why is it that this doesn't work? And I have a much longer live video I did where I went through the oscilloscope and confirmed that it wasn't working. But for the test case here, I wanted to just simplify it. Oh, and the other part that's really confusing is it's just this software. If you use different software, it works. So that, that's the real mystery. Anyway, I wanted to do the simplest possible test case. So we've taken the, the NABU out of the equation. And I just have an Arduino here. And I just have some simple software that literally just sends the single byte that wakes up the internet adapter. And then it prints out if it gets anything back. So we can, we can just confirm that this is a problem. Uh, let me just demonstrate quickly. So I'm gonna go into the settings here. We got COM4, uh, I will turn it on, start serial. Here's my Arduino program uh, monitor back there. Here's the internet adapter here. I'm gonna hit the reset button on the Arduino. And what you should see is in the monitor, it will say that it's starting. It says sent 83X. Uh, the internet adapter receives it and says init mode, but then nothing ever happens here. So that's the weird part. I'll do it again just to demonstrate. We will see it say started, it sent 8.3, one byte, and then nothing comes back. Whereas if I quit this program and run one of the other programs that's designed to do exactly the same thing, same COM port. Sometimes this program is a little finicky to start up, but now it's started up. Oh, and look, it's already, it's already done something. So that's weird. Um, did that come from the... I, I just want to make sure that I'm being, I'm being fair here. Did that didn't come from the, uh, from the other software. Anyway, I'm going to hit the reset button and we'll see what we're supposed to see. See, it says started sent 8.3, and then it got the three bytes in response. So that's all this does. You just keep doing this all day long. Uh, it doesn't implement any of the rest of the protocol. It just stops there. But let's double check. It's a little suspicious that when I ran that, I saw some, some data there. It could, it could have been a fluke for various reasons that I'm about to describe in a second, but let me do it again. Yeah, so it's it's not getting anything back. Um, anyway, I don't want to spend a lot of this video doing that over and over again because we already know that. <laughs> and that's what happens with a real NABU. It just sits there and then it says adapter failure. Um, but if you change the software, it works. So I, I was rap yeah, racking my brain to try to figure out what could possibly be the reason for that. And I kept coming back to thinking it's flow control. Is, could it be flow control? And so let's, let's do something here. This uh, TTL adapter, you might notice this wire hanging out. That wire is stuck into the CTS line and I am going to stick the other end of that wire into the RTS line. I'm doing one of those one-handed things. It's almost impossible. Um, if I can, ah, it's a great video. If I can just get that into there and shove that in. Okay, I now have connected CTS and RTS. Oh, we already, we've already seen some data flow. So let me hit the reset button again on here. And look, now this software also works, kind of. I might have upset it by Mostly also works. Anyway, it does work. So, so um, 
this this was my theory all along here. I don't know why this is not perfect now, but I I I think it's not important. <laughs> I think I, I think I've. I've proved the concept and there's probably some little flaw in my execution. It's possible that, that this, you know, if you keep, it keeps getting that bite enough times, it's not going to respond to it correctly. But if I do this cleanly, it's working. So, so uh, anyway, I, this is five minutes and a half in, so let me explain what the heck is going on here. I think that for whatever reason, it's probably just like a little flag when you open the port. I think that this program is accidentally opening the, the COM port with... CTS RTS flow control enabled and what that means is that it can try to talk it gets it gets that bite and it wants to send back this response and it sends it and it does everything except it's stuck in the driver because uh, the computer is waiting it's buffering it and it's waiting for the CTS line before it's actually going to send it so it gets stuck that's actually why we were seeing it pop up before later uh, because when I switched to the other software it's like hey I had something in the buffer and it cleared it out Right, so that that data is just not making it out onto the wire, um, and it's stuck in in the buffer until CTS is asserted, which I did here by sticking in a jumper wire. Now the interesting thing is, this serial adapter doesn't have those those lines. So the only thing here is power, ground, transmit, and receive. So it is physically impossible to assert CTS with this. Uh, with this adapter and so that's why that's why we were having trouble getting this to work it, it was never going to work um, must be the case that this DTAC my guess would be that it doesn't do flow control and so it doesn't matter if you ask for flow control or not it just goes ahead and sends it whereas this one probably has a different chipset that says, oh yeah, I know how to do flow control, and then it sits there waiting for a wire that's not even not even hooked up, not even on the cable. Um, this one, fortunately, I was able to do that. So I guess there's a workaround if you wanted to do this and you're building one of these things, which is to short uh, CTS. See, I only connected transmit, receive, and ground on the back, but if I had connected a wire between there and there, and I used this instead of this, then it would have worked. Uh, that's a longer winded explanation than I intended to make, but hopefully it makes some sense. And I assume that it would be a trivial thing for DJ to just change his software here to um, make sure that it doesn't select any kind of flow control when it opens the port. And then, uh, and then all's well in, uh, in Nabu land. So in case, uh, mystery solved. I, I hate mysteries and I was not gonna let this one go. <laughs> and and uh, I'm really, you might hear, I'm really, uh, I'm giddy that uh, I know what the heck the problem was all along. So uh, that's all I got for now. See you in the next one. Bye.